and get through. Oh. So um, today we have BK Florence and myself, Kasik Jenner, and we are joined by Zach Bayer, who is the president of the Archaeological Society Jamaica. And we're going to be talking about unearthing our Taino stories using the tool of archaeology. It's going to be just um, just a chat, so if anybody has any questions to ask, please feel free to do so. And um, again, we'd like to welcome um, Zach. Great to have you with us today. I'm, I'm catching it, and, and again, greetings to all your greetings to all your listeners and to both both of you as well. Okay, so you can hear us. Yeah. Great. Great. Yes. Yes. Um, Zach, we're going to sort of start off with just you telling our listeners a little bit about yourself all right yeah well my name is uh zachary buyer uh i am a a caribbean archaeologist i was i was born in the u.s uh well sorry born in the uk uh raised in the u.s uh, and that's where i did my graduate graduate work research at uh, syracuse university with a focus with the focus in the Caribbean, uh, uh, what has attracted me to archaeology? I was raised by uh, parents, historians, so the past and and human experience was was always something uh, I was interested in. And and I like I like dirty work. Uh, I like uh, extraordinary things. Uh, and and archaeology most certainly provides provides a a window into all of that. Uh, I began working in the Caribbean uh, uh, mid mid two thousands, actually earlier two thousands. Uh, uh, I've worked in Puerto Rico. Uh, I've worked on the island of Dominica uh, 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 and, and in Jamaica. That's where the bulk of my work has been. Uh, and, and also a few a few projects on uh, in Saint Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. But look, I came into the region. To actually focus on historical archaeology, this region uh, in the Caribbean, in, in Jamaica, that's largely right around the time. Imagine as a period of time following uh, uh, Spanish uh, uh, Spanish colonialism, uh, contacting colonialism. So I came here to focus on forts, but I, I'm now uh, I've been the lecturer in archaeology and and the lab director at the University of the West Indies. Uh, Mona in Kingston, Jamaica, with the Department of History and Archaeology since 2014. Uh, I also have the the opportunity to serve on the board of the Archaeological Society of Jamaica, uh, uh, as well as the Jamaica National Heritage Trust. So uh, this has provided a, a numerous opportunities to, to do archaeology in Jamaica, including topics uh, uh, like Taino heritage, one that I know uh, your family, your organization, is 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 personally and professionally dedicated to. So I'm 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 happy to be here today to talk with you again, with you again, and with your first time with your with your viewers. Oh, Mabrika, um, as I said, Mabrika is welcome. So um, we normally say a home, which is thank you. So welcome again, and thank you for that. Um, we know a little bit here. We know a little bit. It goes deep. Um, about uh, Zach with us, um, you can see his background. Um, why did you choose Jamaica? You you you're quite young, me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well. Yeah. 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 Well, I um, why choose Jamaica? Following my research in in Dominica again, I worked on a an 18th century British fort. Uh, the focus was on again the heritage of African Caribbean people that within you know the history of of plantation slavery or the history of of you know the emerging modern world they're often left out of of sites like this the military uh, they serve there as laborers and and as soldiers so the project focus there and it just it was actually archaeology that that led me to Jamaica. Uh, I remember one of the most important artifacts found during that project was a. It's called a baldric buckle. It's what soldiers in the British Army would have worn uh, uh, late 18th century, early 19th century. It's a buckle that goes right around here, and this buckle was from the the Sixth West India Regiment. 
The 6th West India Regiment was an all-black enslaved regiment that was actually raised right here in Jamaica at, at Up Park Camp and then served on a variety of different islands. So, so as an archaeologist, you follow, you follow the, the lines of evidence. That would have been a clear connection for me of my research in Dominica to, to Jamaica, which arguably uh, uh, was one of the most important islands in, in the British Caribbean, the entire British Empire at that, at that time. So what brought me to Jamaica, at least research-wise, th that connection through, through the, the military connection. What brought me here in 2000, first, uh, in 2014 was to teach at the University of the West Indies. That's where I spend the bulk of my energies now is engaging with, with, uh, undergraduate, graduate level Jamaicans teaching, presenting the research that I've been involved with, the research that's available in, in, in scientific historical literature. Uh, so that has given me the opportunity. That combination of archaeology, teaching, public engagement has given me the opportunity to live and work in Jamaica since 2014. And, and I'll just follow up with that. I, I don't want to focus too much on my previous work because some of the most exciting work I've been engaged in recently, and I know we've spoken about this in the past, mm -hmm. it, it is the archaeology at White Marl, the mm -hmm. archaeology mm -hmm. of pre-Columbian mm -hmm. Jamaica. But, but also post-Columbian Jamaica. This is, you know, Taino heritage, indigenous right. heritage is something that extends we... extends beyond, extends all the way into the present day. So, right. uh, so happy to speak I, about that today. You and I, are, we're actually familiar with what White Marl is. Can you, for the persons who are watching, can you tell them a little bit about the significance of White Marl in Jamaica? And theory that the Tainos were the first inhabitants, did it actually confirm that when you were doing your archaeological digs? Great, great question. Uh, White Marl uh, is a significant site for, for Jamaican just history, but also in terms of global history, right? It stands out as one of the most significant pre-Columbian Taino sites on the island based on its sheer size and based on the, the level of preservation of what is a tremendously uh, uh, robust archaeological assemblage. So there's a lot of artifacts. Uh, White marl has been known about since at least the late mid to late 19th century. Mm -hmm. uh, the top layers on the ground surface of white marl now, you can see evidence from at least the 18th century onward from when the area was used as a, as a sugar estate. Uh, that was the Caymanis estate. So individuals that would have been working, uh, 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 visiting that estate would have identified bits of pottery, stone tools, uh, and even evidence of human remains, burials, from what are referred to the, the Caymanis Hills. Right. So an early one of the first Jamaican naturalists, George Hill, writes about those hills that the Caymanis Hills, describing ceramic shell and 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 human skeletal remains. So that's been uh, of, that's been sort of one of your one of the larger findings um, areas in Jamaica. Um, is there any yes. sort of proof that, OK, so that's the dig that's been found, but. Is there any proof that the Tainos were the first inhabitants here through that? Or, no, well, so and we it's a good, it's an, no, good question. Uh, the, the issue of who are the first, first peoples in Jamaica, archaeologically, we have that based on the presence of certain artifact styles, right? So, uh, in Jamaica specifically, there, there are two distinct ceramic styles. Uh, one uh, is, is commonly referred to as redware. That's associated with a Amerindian indigenous uh, cultural group uh, that in archaeological literature often called osteonon osteonoids. They have roots. Some of the earliest sites for osteonon osteonoids would be in the uh, eastern part of Dominican Republic, 
where and th then they were the, some of the first migrants to move from that portion of the greater Antilles farther, farther west into areas that had never been settled before, including, right. that, including Jamaica. Mm -hmm. That's the optimum word, settled, so, because people have passed through, but yes. settlers. Settlers, and then, mm -hmm. right, the, the larger settlements and the more dense archaeological record that we find in Jamaica has to do with that second style of, of, of ceramics, which are often boat shaped. They're not, they're unpainted, un, un, unglazed. They're, they look different than these red wares. They're, they're, I, I think I said they're boat shaped. Uh, those are referred to as Mayakin osteonoid. And it may sound like funny names. All those are names that are derived from their uh, Antilles, they were first found in some of the earliest sites. Uh, so with that first phase, the redware uh, people, for lack of a better word, again, people, but archaeologists in the past have often turned artifacts into living, breathing people. So the redware people, they begin that migration arguably around 550 AD, 550, uh, arrive in places in J like Jamaica around that time, settle at areas along the coast, like on the north coast, Little River in Jamaica is one of the earliest sites. There's there's also some some redware sites uh, 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 along the south coast. The north coast. Yeah, good question. Right outside of Ochi and and Ocho Rios, okay. uh, and and I think. In close proximity to a, 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 a popular natural feature, Laughing Waters, I think. Okay, okay. Uh, I've actually never visited the site, and this is an issue, a, a problem that we face in Caribbean archaeology. That's a site that most certainly has been impacted by coastal erosion and development, right? So likely very little of that site still remains, uh, the, the site that would have been identified, I, right. I think, in the... Uh, the yeah, 50s, the a, 60s, the 70s, so early on. Yeah, so it's a big problem, the protection of the sites in Jamaica. Um, yes, yes, and I saw that as one of your questions, right, and I, yeah, I know we'll no, talk because more. Because they have a spiritual significance with our people. Yes. And um, a lot of the time, like, there are young persons that go in and they destroy petroglyphs and stuff like that, and it's... It's 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 an issue, but we'll get to that a little later on down the line. Can yeah. I ask you, um, the schools here in Jamaica they depend on a number of outdated books written um, by authors from like the first editions and stuff like that from like a pretty long time ago, before this kind of information was available on the Taino. Um, how are recent findings on the Taino? being disseminated yeah. into the schools so that they can have the more up-to-date truths about yeah. the people because a lot of the stuff that they learn yeah. is not necessarily reflection yeah. a reflection of what, yeah. we, what we as a community in terms of like educated on top know about the Tainos. The, the younger persons aren't learning those truths you know and it's quite important for cultural right. and personal development yeah i you know the the short answer is that we're not doing enough uh again i i i, I work with at, at ue i'm involved with the jnht i'm involved with the archaeological society of jamaica obviously we need to do more to uh provide this information also in a way, and we've, we've spoken about this before, in a way that, that, that's comprehensive, right? Across a variety of audiences uh, to, so we can not only educate, but we can, we can motivate appreciation, right? Yeah. So the idea that you're walking into a site, uh, you're destroying it, you're, you're vandalizing, you're, you're looting. I have a feeling uh, that would greatly be reduced if our efforts could be could, uh, if our efforts are enhanced and there are over the last 20 years i mean the amount of findings that really could be not again informative inspirational for caribbean peoples uh there's there's a lot of them 
right? And one of the, it gets back to the question that we just finished up with. Who are the Taino? Uh, is we, we have moved from using terms like Arawak, which most clearly uh, uh, appreciates the links of Caribbean peoples with, with South American peoples, but far too general in order to, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, appreciate the level of diversity that not only was observed at contact, so ethno-historical archival documents, but that's being identified archeologically. Most certainly archeology span is demonstrating just the complex mm -hmm. uh, and the diverse uh, uh, societies at, uh, in the Caribbean. It, archeology span has clarified the relatively late migration of indigenous populations into Jamaica, the levels of diversity among, again, earlier redware populations, later, uh, Mayakin, osteonoid, boat-shaped ceramic, uh, uh, well, societies that were constructing that those types of ceramics. Also, the reality that when you find an earlier, or again, archaeologists, we dig stratigraphically. When you find an earlier redware site, this isn't generally underneath a later uh, a Mayakin site, showing you that you have two distinct migrations, two different ways of settling, two different ways of subsisting, eating, uh, and, and, and the list could go on, right. and it should go on with more archaeological research. So to get to the end of your, your question, we, we can do a lot more. Uh, there needs to be more of a presence of archaeologists in Jamaica. God bless uh, the University of the West Indies for providing the opportunity for, for an archaeologist, but we only have one archaeologist. Uh, on on the campus, we've got a large group of a relatively large group at the Jamaica National Heritage Trust. But albeit their time, the resources for for independent research or public education are, are no doubt limited. And and again, the Archaeological Society of Jamaica has I mean it's quite remarkable. It's a society that's been around from at least the the sixties, late seventies. In the past, there were newsletters, uh, uh, perhaps more more products. This is something that we we are attempting now to to change. Like yourselves, utilizing social media, trying to digitize previous journals. There was a lot of work that has taken place in Jamaica that hasn't that hasn't found a place uh, in terms of what a, an, an article, a publication, and. Uh, we need to not only do scientific publications, but also pu publications for popular, popular media, primary and secondary schoolers. And I just want to uh, identify an individual, a Jamaican, uh, uh, Dr. Leslie Gale Atkinson, who not only has provided a key and a leading collection of of scientific work on Jamaican pre-Columbian populations, yeah. but the children's book, right? Yeah. Uh, which no doubt is informed and inspired by archaeology, her own personal story as, 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 a, as a maroon and as, as someone who identifies as Taino. So uh, more needs to be done, but, but, but things are being done. Uh, yeah. We just need to keep up the pace. Okay. And, and also, at the Taino I... Park, a platform for schools and visitors actively um, participate in lifestyle of the Tainos of the pre-Columbian Tainos, yeah? Can you relate to our visitors how organizations such as yourselves contribute to the information that they provide, that we provide? Well, I mean, I, I'll be a bit, I think, and that's, thank you for that. I think I'm a bit biased in that we've, we've spoken to one another for, I think, almost two years now. Uh, we had the opportunity. I had the opportunity of being invited up there to give a presentation to some of your some of your students with with some of my support staff staff the lab technologists uh, and 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 one of my one of my graduate students uh, and and you've also come down to to Kingston in order to present at, at the annual Archaeological Society of Jamaica meeting. So I think these public events such as the ones that you all hold routinely, we at the university, the archeological society, uh, probably hold less routinely, but that are, that are available. I think that's, 
that's a key meeting place, key meeting ground for us to, to share in this similar objective. Uh, I know Jenna and I have spoken directly about, about sources, and I think uh, 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 your father as well, about recent sources. You all have done a considerable amount of homework in terms of what information that you provide to your visitors and to your participants. Uh, so what, what is that? That's, that's being active, being a, a good spirited communicator and, 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 and sharing, and sharing these resources. What we need to work on in the future. And I think post COVID, I hope we return to a world of face to face interaction and active field work. Yeah, that's interesting. We can bring people to sites as, as field trips or as, as daily participants in not only uh, the process of learning, but the process of discovery, right? I, I think being told what to, to know uh, is, is one side of learning, but doing it actively and, and discovering uh, important information that speaks to you both personally and what you want to do in the future, I think that's the way to go. And I think archaeology clearly provides that. Yeah, because we actually need the um, we need backing of um, and proof. Because when this, when this, when the children, the school children come to us, um, they they're hungry to see the link between the um, you know themselves, themselves and the Tainos um, yeah. is read in the book, and the way the books are written, part of the books are written. In the stage where they're saying that people um, from um, Venezuela, so the, 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 they're in the children's mind, it's, it's saying it's that a direct the, boat trip, right? A direct boat trip from South America right. to Jamaica, missing about two thousand years of right. of indigenous right. development, right, right in the Lesser and, and Greater right. Antilles, right? right? And and archaeology provides the that the reinforcement again a, a re, the reinforcement of the more realistic origins of of Jamaican indigenous society. But it is you have to walk people through it. It's complex. That's it's, what that's our platform. That's our platform. It's to walk yeah. you through. So and I there mean, should be more projects that are done as a community in order to be able to disseminate that information. Right. Unity Jenna, you're absolutely unity. right. Yeah. And unity in and, projects. So taking and these papers yeah. from the symposiums and from archaeological digs and then using platforms like the Taino Heritage Camp to yep. disseminate the information, not only to the children, but also to teachers, to <laughs> visitors, etc., etc. You know, the list goes on. But it kind of like some of the, because remember at the beginning of our conversation, we were talk. We, you and I, just delved into a conversation because we already have that foundation of knowledge. Right. A lot right. of persons don't, and you need to be able to have that skill of being able to take the information that is quite complex and turning it into something that is easy to absorb for a ten-year-old or for a fifty-year-old that doesn't have well, any experience. Well, right. Even even for the teachers, right, yeah. who are who are leading the way at yeah. the primary and secondary level, I'll tell you at the university level uh, with the, the history and archaeology department, we are involved with CXC training sessions, everything like that. I will tell you, since I've been here in 2014, I've been very underwhelmed by the amount. I mean, there doesn't seem to be specific questions guided by sources and 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 an appreciation of the evidence that again has been discovered in jamaica since at least the mid to later 19th century if not earlier you don't see those questions being asked and perhaps our our students are then entering higher levels of education or professions where where they don't have the vision they don't have the appreciation right so it is really a task of of, of yeah educators and, and creating the right learning environment. Yeah, yeah. And, and the collaborations. You know? Well, I think Jamaica's, yep. Going, yep. I think Jamaica's going, going in, the, in the right direction because um, speaking to other, uh, other countries, other Caribbean countries, you know, BK, 
Arabs and and um, Kasiks from other countries have actually um, said that Jamaica is now, even though they were at the back, now almost in the forefront because it's been introduced as a topic in the schools. And then, of course, we're now going to need, um, because it's such a, a, a great leap, we're going to need substantial evidence to make any changes because from the Arawaks to Tainos, that's just one, you know, we're, no, one of the it's so, uh, the same. They're saying if they were talked Arawak, Arawak, you know that the Arawaks were here. Now the Tainos are here. What's going to make you believe that um that your your um, evidence is you know your evidence is any different, any more proof? You know why mm -hmm. should they why should they take on that learning? Why should we change to say Tainos? So why I'm saying archaeologists have found that if you can give, give there needs to be answers to these. Yeah, and I, I, I appreciate it. I mean, with our work at White Marl, some of the public education that we tried to do, it wrapped around, it utilized uh, portable kind of uh, uh, artifact exhibits, uh, but also using, you know, highlighting a philosophy like Taino in a yard, right, that this is Sometimes the sites are in your backyard. Uh, uh, Jamaica widely referred to as yard, right? The idea is that you own this, that this becomes a part of your, your African, indigenous, Caribbean identity in the, in the 21st century. Archaeology can outline migration events. It can provide specific right. evidence that, that right. showcases that the names that we use are often... Uh, uh, shrouding, often obscuring some some important diversity, right? And right. instead of a hierarchy of importance that say classical Taino and Puerto Rico are 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 grander or more advanced than what we have here, archaeology really provides the sense of complexity, a contextual sense of complexity. How these island, how these societies are functioning within their own islands and also interacting with surrounding islands and surrounding surrounding continents. So I think, you know, cr cr providing the information and archaeology can be very particular, right? It's, it's a site specific. We get into the nitty gritty about ceramic decorations. From that particular information, though, you can really achieve a particular sense of what it meant to be in Jamaica, a uh, Jamaican during, during that time. So meshing that information then with, with the desire to reform education, uh, 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 advance education in Jamaica and throughout the wider Caribbean. I think that's that's the next. Uh, and so, it, well, it's so the task. The, has been, you're uh, actually saying that um, Jamaicans um, have Taino heritage. I most certainly, most certainly. I mean, in as general as you know, food practices, pepper pot stew, as in you know, landscape practices and. And ideally, the more systematic archaeology that is done, specialists in, in DNA testing will I will hopefully. And I, I mean, it's my belief that it will be there that you will be able to match up ancient DNA from skeletal evidence that has been excavated previously at sites, or that is currently has in the more recent past has been excavated at White Marl. We've been working there since 2016, matching up that with, with contemporary Jamaicans, providing you clear evidence of, of continuity. And um, so we had a extinction genocide within a single generation. Okay. Yeah. So we had a conversation, one of our first, in our, in our first episode, um, with a doctor from the US who was doing a um, research on, on Tainos across the Caribbean and the Americas. Now, what he was using as his kind of zero person, we're having some problems with our internet. This came up just now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm seeing you and I'm hearing you, okay, Jenna. Great. Yeah, it's gone back to green, so it's okay. Um, no, what I was saying is, is that he's using a um, 
a DNA sample from a an archaeological site in the Bahamas. Known as Lucy. Known as he uh, he named her Lucy himself mm-hmm. though. Mm-hmm. So um but she was um Lucayan, a Lucayan Taino. And so he yeah. was kind of using her yeah. as like kind of like a zero person that everyone could potentially be related to. Um, and we should talk about getting the DNA samples from Jamaica, the older ones, and seeing if we can make a comparative link between um, the two as well. Because the mapping right. continues, it would be nice to have samples from all the different islands to see how the Tainos mixed and how close they were in their DNA and stuff. Right. And again, like we mentioned in terms of changing education systems and, uh, uh, and the content that's being provided, a lot of these studies just relying on multidisciplinary collaboration, including a variety of individuals. I'm, a, I'm aware of Han Schroeder's work, uh, mixed with uh, Corinne Hoffman, Corinne, uh, uh, Professor Hoffman, she's at Leiden University, and they've, they've led an amazing program combining DNA, you know, traditional archaeological studies, so ceramic stone tools, but really combining it with some advanced, advanced analytical tools, right? right? And so, connecting with the cultural side of it as well, because exactly, archaeology exactly. is white science, but kind of creating that connectivity that it's a puzzle that fits together yep. to, to unearth story you know the complete story you have to bring everything together at the end of the day yeah Yeah, agreed 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 so we have a very very strong spirituality as taino people um at the taino heritage camp we continue to practice that as well and like we said at the conversation there are a lot of sites that aren't necessarily protected is there anything that is being done order to protect these sites yeah in order to protect yeah. these sites like maybe laws or etc to be able to protect the sites from like the kids and vandalism and sometimes oh, from uh, just, whatever yeah. yeah just natural and and other human forces right like right. development we spoke about mm-hmm. climate change look jamaica has a legacy of heritage laws uh the Jamaica National Trust Commission was established under the British. That was like 1958. That began this, this blueprint for heritage law uh, ar- involving archaeology and other, other objects or resources, including natural ones that are viewed as significant. Currently, the Jamaica National Heritage Trust, that agency formed in 19, or at least the laws passed or revised in 1985, that's who's in charge of enforcing that law. That law is very much in need of, of, of updating, but even if you update that law, you also need monitoring. not only more enforcement, enforcement, monitoring, and again, an appreciation, not only by individuals, but an appreciation by private companies by and government agencies yep, and government yes. agencies. Uh, so uh, I've been involved with the JNHT, and it, it's been a long revision process, far, uh, uh, far before my time here. I think it began in 1998. But the idea uh, revise the current act and make it more specific, use you know uh, a specific language, but also specific measures to protect, and but also to promote. Right, that's another part of the law, and promotion can. And education. Education, but also giving landowners, landowners or building owners, you know, incentives. Why I would want to protect this. Why I wouldn't want to destroy this. There's obviously a lot that needs to be done. Uh, I'll tell you that at least at the JNHT level, when human remains are, are encountered in the field, they're treated ethically, they're, they're, they're excavated systematically if need be archaeologists don't and i think the popular belief of archaeologists is that they 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 dig holes and they remove whatever is there if human remains are found uh generally it's in the context of a site is threatened it's going to be destroyed 
or uh, uh, for a variety of human forces or, or natural forces, or there's clear rationale for the research to take place. The work at White Marl has been done, and there's there's tremendous amounts of of burials at the site of White Marl. It was occupied from at least AD 850 all the way up to and beyond uh, Spanish settlement. So this was, you know, a, a, a town, a settlement in occupation for a thousand years, people living and dying, right? So a variety of human remains that are, that are very valuable uh, in terms of interpreting what, how people uh, uh, treated, uh, viewed the afterlife, but also how the living treated, treated the dead. So it tells us a lot about society. So the study of human remains is valuable, but it needs to be done ethically. There needs to be laws that support the the protection of these of these sites, laws that inform how archaeology or or how uh, uh, public education may be done around these sites. There's there's examples uh, of how we can add more responsibility and ethics into the study of of Taino remains, but human remains. Period. Uh, but in the United States, they have the Native uh, NAGPRA, Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act. Uh, and that obviously wor- it works, you know, I, I won't say 100 percent, but I would say it's effective in the United States for uh, indigenous tribes that have been rec- for federally recognized tribes that if there are human remains, artifacts, archaeological evidence that has been studied, that is stored in public. Or, or, or institutions uh, 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 that that they can be identified, reclaimed, reburied, right? In Jamaica, we not not only don't have that law, but we're in a situation where the history books, maybe even your loved ones, your family members, will tell you, no, Taino is extinct. Taino is dead, right? So, if that is the impression, you're 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 blocking a contemporary group from potentially. Uh, uh, advocating for not only the preservation, but for the ethical treatment of remains that they not only feel spiritually connected to, but biologically connected to, right? So, yeah, in terms of ethical treatment, especially around burial sites, sacred sacred landscapes, uh, like education, there's a lot there's a lot more that we can do to ensure that this is this is being done uh, uh, ethically and with the future in mind. We're here, we're grassroots. Um, a lot of the things that have actually we've had in this discussion are quite, um, the topics are quite um, academic. So um, for the, the viewers that are not quite um, understanding the whole of this, if you, do, you can always call in to us and we can try and make this as, um, as, as grassroot level as... as, as yeah. Um, possible. Agreed. I just want to underscore that I've had the opportunity to study uh, the first people's uh, early inhabitants of, of Jamaica, Taino. We can we can add more more complicated names to that. But but ta- the study of Taino uh, uh, is also contemporary activism where you have a variety of groups, not only within the Caribbean, but now internationally, right. uh, that are joining in, uh, uh, aiding in the preservation of these materials, right. their protection, but also aiding in informing what are the types of questions that count, uh, the issues that count when it comes to continued archaeology, continued study, continued heritage management of these sites and resources. So uh, most certainly this should whether it's academic, you know, academic material should be grounded within this grassroots movement. Right, right, a hundred percent, hundred percent. And just another thing that um, uh, uh, questions that have been asked is that um, if the Tainos were here in Jamaica, okay, um, was it just the digs, just the areas that you, we, you know that's been dug up, the Tainos, or was or were the Tainos in the whole of Jamaica? I know it might sound this might sound like a um, you know sort of a, 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 a might be a silly question, but no, it's, it's, I don't it's think so. Up. Mm-hmm. It's been brought up. I don't think. Well, and archaeologists again, it's it's not it's not only like a slow science. So you know we 
we often we take a long time to dig. We take a long time to then turn those results around into published content and presumably even longer to turn that around into comprehensible content for a majority for a majority of people. But we, again, there's a handful of sources, Philip Allsworth Jones's book, Leslie Gale Atkinson's book, that highlight the known locations of the earliest sites in Jamaica, uh, uh, Amerindian, pre-Columbian peoples, those sites, along with some of the, the ones like White Marl mm -hmm. that, that are occupied longer, right? But the reality is there's there's still a whole lot more work that needs to be done. 100%. So it's not to necessarily a, just the digs where the Tainos would would live. Tainos uh, lived in Jamaica. Well, we need to just think about that. Human movement runs right. from permanent, semi-permanent right. to pretty impermanent uh, spaces. Right? That that movement is active. This most certainly was an indigenous landscape 100%. before it was sectional sectioned off and 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 modified uh uh you know uh, during the colonial period so there's a whole lot of opportunity to extend research in jamaica to further areas that may need more testing but also into earlier times that we haven't yet found evidence for whether that's uh, uh, what are often called pre-ceramic, archaic populations, based on the present evidence, it seems that Jamaica is only populated with indigenous peoples by AD 550, 600. But, but archaeology is dependent on what is a, a rather fragmentary and sensitive, sensitive set of, of sources, right? Uh, so... Perhaps, perhaps we could identify earlier sites, which would really throw into question and add clarity to to current understandings about about uh, you know migrations and settlements in Jamaica. Right, right, right. I, I hope that's helping a lot of um, people out there that have been making this um, inquiry as to whether it was the, the, the country was inhabited by. Um, the Tainos or whether the Tainos. Well, and I'll, can I just add that it's also Tainoness is often, again, very time specific. It's about, you know, again, AD, oftentimes for archaeologists, they argue that by 1200, AD 1200, you have these complex, uh, large, you know, uh, uh, large populations, complex chiefdoms by AD mm -hmm. 1200. But it's interesting to note that ethno-historical documents, historical documents are still documenting what are arguably indigenous peoples, Indians, on uh, Sir Captain Morgan's uh, probate inventory. That's like a will. And when he dies in 1682, this is in the Spanish town archives in, uh, well, the Jamaica archives in Spanish town. You know, as a former pirate, uh, former, you know, a, a politician, mm -hmm. he was quite rich. But some of the things that made him richest were the people that he owned. Right. right. So African slave, African slave men, women and children. And they also list two Indians. You know, we're not sure if that's what Jamaican Amerind indigenous Indians, Amerindians, or if that on Jamaica or from surrounding islands, or perhaps even from the United States at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But again, through this use of multiple sources that again, extend beyond what traditionally is known as, you know, the Taino extinction mm -hmm. period, right? Mm -hmm. What mid 16th mm -hmm. century. Mm -hmm. Well, we're seeing the evidence of uh, archaeologically, historically, so and and perhaps even biologically with the DNA research that mm -hmm. we spoke about mm -hmm. spoke about earlier. So mm -hmm. a lot of different sources, a lot of different opportunities to study and practice this. Uh, uh, yeah, in the present. Right, right. Um, Miss Jenna, would you like to um, tie up? And is there any questions that you'd like to put to? Uh I actually don't have any more questions. Um, I just want to say to everybody that in the future, there's going to be a lot more work happening between the Taino Heritage Camp and the and 
Zach Zach for one, at least. (laughs) The Archaeological um, Society of Jamaica in providing information for people out there in order to be able to learn more about our Taino heritage. Um, And the understanding. Yeah, and the understanding of timelines are because I think that's something that is kind of missing that missing link mm-hmm. is that we have a lot of this like dotted staccato information yeah it's 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 hard to digest as a concise story mm-hmm. and so being able right. to kind of fit that timeline in using archaeology will most definitely help younger persons coming mm-hmm. up older persons interested and, and in, in being able to disseminate the information that we have that comes from the academic, the academics, and to actually put them into layman's terms so that the general yeah. public can actually use them and be of benefit to them yeah. and, and have a place to come and have a place to come yeah. to, yeah. because mm-hmm. they wouldn't necessarily be able to come and like knock on on your door on a day to day basis, but they would actually have a place to come and actually mm-hmm. be able to say, "I want this information because we are." A Educational, right. we are an educational, educational heritage yeah. centre. Yeah. And as George right. has said, uh, George, one of the um, uh, uh, Kasik from, 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 from America, who I think you know quite well. He's from the, the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian um, Museum in, in America um, has actually said that um, he, he's here and he is so blown over by it because of the amount of work that we've tried to make it um, take the place as authentic as possible so that um, the lay person can actually um, delve into it, actively interest, and we can we get information from people as yourselves, as um, you know, archaeologists, um, uh, genealogists, doctors. We put them together and create truth to the whole um, almost mystical surrounding of the Tainos in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, I just want to, uh, again, thank you for the opportunity. You you all are, again, one of the you know only institutions, one of the only groups that are providing this space of what spiritual belonging, education. Uh, it's been a pleasure to visit uh, y'all's location in, in St. Mary, as well as to have kept this conversation going over the last last couple of years and uh, you know the it, it, archaeological society of jamaica department of history and archaeology all very all very uh impressed and and w- wanting to stay I- involved with your all's activities into the future it's okay so thank you. let's just keep the chat going yeah, yeah. definitely definitely all right thank you thank everybody you. for joining us today and thank you so much Zach. And we will definitely stay in touch. And during yes. downtime, I'm sure we'll get a chance to work on some projects together that can hopefully come to fruition once everything yep. goes back to normal. Agreed. Uh, agreed. Our art goes out. To, our art yeah. goes out. All those that may have suffered with the uh, corona and the pandemic that's happening at the moment, you have yep. our blessing. Yeah. And everybody, please stay safe. Uh, it's 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 important to keep your head in these times, you know. So everybody, I just want to give blessings and hope everybody stays safe during this time. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Zach.